How many Batman actors do you know? If you're watching this in 2024, which is when I plan on releasing this video, you're probably familiar with the most recent Batmans. Robert Pattinson has finally convinced society that he's no longer sparkly Edward Cullen, despite having portrayed spotlight ceiling roles in Tenet in The Prince. Not wanting to be remembered as the man who played the boy, he's gone the way of Daniel Radcliffe when it comes to shedding early career roles. Although I think we can all agree Daniel's got the bigger hurdle in overcoming that one. Robert Pattinson's Batman was known for being darker and grittier than the Batmans that came before it. Which, if you actually think about it, is what critics have said about pretty much every Batman at the time of its release. That and... The villain was the best part! are two recurring themes you're going to hear throughout the Batman movies, with perhaps the one exception being Robot Batman played by Ben Affleck. Some of you may be asking yourselves, why is Ben Affleck's Batman called Robot Batman? That's because, and this is not very well known, I have never seen that one. This movie has a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, but made $500 million in profits. And that's why they won't stop making them. From the moment this movie was announced, I knew it was a cash grab. Some producer sat down and said, Johnson, if we're gonna compete with Marvel, we have to hire the biggest names in the business. Uh, ben Affleck, yes. Henry Cavill, yes. Gal Gadot, yes. Zack Snyder. Yes. Brilliant, Johnson! That's why you were hired! I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I know Wonder Woman was supposed to be good. I'll probably watch that someday. But I'm not interested in the rest. Now we move on to my favorite Batman series, the Christopher Nolan Trilogy. I was a giddy little 14-year-old boy when Batman Begins came out in 2005, which was then followed by one of the greatest acting performances of all time. Christian Bale's take on Batman wasn't overdone and memed out at the time of release, so it was cool for a while until his voice just sounded like gravel in a blender. Tom Hardy gives a great performance as Bane, but unfortunately he had such big shoes to fill after Heath Ledger that people downplayed his role. That and he sounded like he was speaking into a giant mixing bowl. I was born in the darkness. Now we're entering what I call the colorful era of Batman, which was four films from 1989 to 1997. Those films were Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. This era included Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy, Jim Carrey as the Riddler, Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face, Danny DeVito as the Penguin, and Jack Nicholson as the Joker. There were three Batmans across these four movies. I don't know why, but my guess is each one went, wow, that's a lot of money to play one of the coolest characters of all time. And then the movie came out, and they were like, nah, that wasn't worth it. The last actor to portray Batman in this series was none other than handsome hunk, George Don't Mind the Pants Clooney, in 1997's Batman and Robin. I'd like to point out the suit, because we're going to see it devolve as we move backwards, as well as the bat nipples, because I don't want anyone to miss that. I saw all these movies as a kid in the 90s, and I'm not really sure who does what in each film, but if you know Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jim Carrey, or Jack Nicholson, you pretty much got the idea. Val Kilmer was 1995's Batman Forever, and if at first you're like, that guy? Don't worry, he only started dressing like a vampire from the 70s in his later years. Back in the 90s, he was pretty sharp. Notice we're still in the suit, but the hair is definitively 90s. Somehow in the 80s, he looked more like he was from the 2000s, which further cements the vampire theory. And finally, our earliest Batman from this era, Michael Keaton, who portrayed the Dark Knight in 1989's Batman and 1992's Batman Returns. And most recently, 2023's The Flash? I think because of multiple realities or something? Where have we heard that one before? Where have we heard that one before? Where have we heard that one before? If I recall correctly, Michael was also outshone by his villains. The villain was the best part! I might be wrong on the Penguin, but I know that was the case for the Joker. Because Jack Nicholson's performance was the only thing anyone talked about from that movie. Side note, before The Dark Knight came out, Jack Nicholson was offended he wasn't approached by anyone for a sequel featuring the Joker. And in the context of today, that seems like sort of an a-hole reaction. But at the same time, Jack Nicholson's portrayal of the Joker held pretty much the same reverence that Heath Ledger's does today. It would be like if Heath Ledger was still alive today, and no one consulted him on future instances of the character. But... Heath Ledger ended up with the performance of a lifetime and tragically died just before the film's release. And after winning one of the only posthumous acting Oscars in history, no one ever talked about Jack Nicholson's comments again. Except apparently for all the news articles that regularly resuscitate the story for easy clicks. And here's where we take our biggest jump between Batman films. The last movie released before 1989's Batman was Batman the Movie, starring our main man, Adam West, in 1966. This Batman features possibly the most cartoonish villains of them all, being straight-up stereotypes of old-fashioned comic books. Actually, there are a number of cliches, just from the trailer of the film. Holy surprises, Batman! It's really exciting! That's right, Robin. Batman the movie also contains the sexiest Batman-mobile, and Burt Ward is Robin, who is still alive today at the age of 78. 
We take another leap backwards to 1949 for our next Batman, which is technically a movie serial, meaning it was released in theaters, but in multiple parts, once a week. We're far back enough in history now that the Robin actor doesn't actually have a photo on Wikipedia, and the Batman actor looks like he should be on the Titanic. I know pretty much nothing about this one, other than it's the one where Batman has funny ears. The villain is apparently a wizard whose identity never gets revealed, and all of that is a sequel to 1943's Batman, which you may have never heard of, not only because it's old, but because it's pretty unashamedly World War II propaganda. The plot is basically Batman as a government agent for the US, trying to stop Dr. Daka, who is just an American white guy playing a Japanese person. It hasn't aged well, and falls into that 30s, 40s cartoon category that major animation studios, namely Disney, wish didn't exist. So that wraps up our walk through the Batman films. We've got The Batman Part 2 coming out in 2025. We don't know much about it, but the implication is that guy from Banshees of Inishirin is going to be our new spoiler alert. I'm about to name a major character he plays. A big, big name. Turn the video off now if you don't want to know. Resuming in 3, 2, 1. But the implication is that guy from Banshees of Inishirin is going to be our new Joker. And that's only one year after Joaquin Phoenix is supposed to be reprising his role in the sequel to 2019's The Joker, which I believe the correct French pronunciation for is Joker Folliered Ducks. And that's it. Now I gotta go record this. Wait a second.